goes to Smith. Jamari for three and the win. Yeah! He got it! We are here to feel Rock's news. This is the Rock's Field Podcast. Of course, I am your host, LaShar Binkley. You can always find me on Twitter, X, at Binkley Hoops. You can find my real world girl at the Dream Shake Out SB Nation. And, of course, we want to start off by saying a early Merry Christmas to all the Rockets fans out there. I mean, it definitely was a Merry Christmas for Rockets fans as the Rockets were able to come away with a 106-104 victory over the New Orleans Pelicans, getting their third row win on the year. And the Rockets won't play again until Tuesday, so this is definitely a Merry Christmas for all the Rockets fans out there. Definitely want to start by saying that. And I also wanted to get out a quick reaction video uh, not the normal time we usually do our podcast, but this was such a big win for the Rockets. I definitely wanted to get this out as soon as possible. Uh, like I said, the Rockets were able to come away with the victory as they held the Pelicans to 20 points in the fourth quarter. And that was a huge reason why the Rockets were able to pull off this victory. The defense hadn't showed up the last several games. It actually disappeared. It had slipped, uh, slipped the last uh, few games where the Rockets were giving up over 130 points a game. But this game, especially at fourth quarter, the Rockets defense showed up. They shut the Pelicans down the last few minutes of the game, have some of their best defensive possessions of the of the year, especially guarding Zion and, and guarding Brandon Ingram. But the big story of today was Alper and Shangoon. They had a career high 37 points and absolutely demoralized the New Orleans Pelicans. I haven't seen a dominant performance like this from a Rockets center since probably the early days of Dwight Howard when he was putting up um, massive numbers of 30 and 15 or 30 and 20. That was the type of performance that Alper and Shangoon had. And it, it showed the growth of Alper and Shangoon because in the past, playing against Jonas Valjunas, he struggled because Jonas Valjunas is such a big guy. He's, he likes to punish people down in the paint. And Alper and Shangoon sometimes struggle a little bit with that getting in foul trouble. But the last couple of times he's faced Jonas, he's actually fouled Jonas out of the game to where a point where Jonas has seemed completely defeated. I mean, Jonas is a mountain of a person, but Alperen Shangun did not back down at all with the physicality. He actually took it to Jonas to the point where Jonas really didn't even play that much in the second half, and they tried to put Jeremiah Earl Robinson on, or Robinson Earl, if you want to say his name, on oh, Alperen Shangun, and we know how that went. Shangun went right at him time after time, scoring easily, and that's another reason why the Rockets were able to stay in the game up until that fourth quarter because they took advantage of that matchup. And as soon as Jones came back in in the fourth quarter, Alper Shangun went right at him and got him in, in more foul trouble and eventually fouled him out of the game to where Jonas was like a non-factor in the second half, something we weren't used to seeing in the past when Jonas went up against Rocket Centers. But Alper Shangun was absolutely dominant, like I said, with a career high of 37 points, his best game of his career um, tonight as he helped the Rockets pull out the victory. Also definitely want to give a shout out to Jabari Smith, who – Unlike Jalen, who I'll talk a little bit about briefly before I end the show, J Jabari has taken that next step this season. He has slowly been creeping up his way, and he's on to the point now where he's probably the Rockets' second-best player if you just look at his overall play. He had another great game tonight where he was physical. He got into it with Jose Alvarado, um, who tried to get physical with him, but Jabari gave it right back to him. And that's the thing about Jabari. He's one of the players on the Rockets that will not back down to anybody. We've seen him get into it with him. Uh, a few other players to where it doesn't even matter that Jabari is a really young player and is, and is still only um, starting out in the NBA. He does not back down to anybody. He has extreme confidence. Anytime I ask him questions, I talk to him in press conferences after games. He is always extremely confident in his game, whether he has a good game or a bad game. And he has seemed to take M.A., you, you know, can put him on the bench uh, in some fourth quarters where he struggled. He seemed to take that to heart and it actually elevated his game to where now, I mean, he's to the point where he said he's probably the Rockets' second best player, and he had another great game tonight. Um, also want to give a shout to the Rockets bench. The Rockets bench struggled in the first three quarters. They only had seven points in the first three quarters. They were being outscored 17-7 to seven by the Pelicans bench. That fourth quarter, uh, M.A. took a huge chance. He put all five bench players on the, on the uh, uh, to start the fourth quarter and had all the Rockets starters on the bench to give them some rest. And the Rockets bench actually came through. They scored 12 huge points in that fourth quarter, including Jeff Green had some great plays. Of course, Tari Eason is always making great plays. Aaron Holiday had a three. The Rockets bench really showed up in that fourth quarter, and they were a huge reason why the Rockets were able to even stay 
Uh, actually, they took the lead for the Rockets um, midway through the fourth quarter. So the Rockets bench was huge in that fourth quarter. Definitely don't want to uh, forget to mention them. But again, the Rockets defense holding them to 20 points in the fourth quarter. And keep in mind, this was a this is probably the healthiest the Pelicans have been all year long. Zion played, Brandon Ingram played, CJ McCullum played. Um, they were pretty healthy outside of Larry Nance, who's not really one of their starters anyway. So they were probably the healthy they had been all season long. And you taking the fact that they've been playing really well since they lost to the Lakers in the in-season tournament. So this was a huge win, especially for the Rockets team. They only had two road wins coming into this um, game. So this was a very big win for the Houston Rockets. And now they, they, they're they going to go on a pretty long homestand coming up with the first game against Indiana on Tuesday. But real quickly, I just want to talk about Jalen Green, who again struggled, again did not play in the fourth quarter. Um, he actually, in the first half, the Rockets only had five turnovers. Jalen Green had all five of the turnovers. He finished with six turnovers, did not play in the fourth quarter. He continues to struggle and be inconsistent. Um, it's just something that he's going to have to work through because M.A. has no problem, as you see, putting Jalen Green on the bench. And that's something Jalen Green just going to have to fight through, whether he's a number two pick or not. The Rocks are trying to win games. They're not worrying about people's feelings right now. They will sit Jabari on the bench. They will sit Jalen on the bench. Really, any of the really young players, they have no problem putting them on the bench if they're not playing well. And that's the thing that Jalen has to learn, that even if he's not shooting the ball well, he needs to do other things well. He can't turn the ball over. If he's going two for eight, two for nine, he can't then have six turnovers. That's an automatic way to get yourself on the bench. The thing about Jabari, even when he is struggling, he still finds ways to do other things like rebound. He had a couple of like three or four games in a row where he had 10 plus rebounds, but tonight he had to score and a rebound to go in. So that's why I say that he took what uh, M.A. said to him by putting him on the bench in some of those four quarters of uh, previous games. He took that to heart. And he actually elevated his game. And that's something Jalen's going to have to do because it's going to get to the point where Jalen may not even get 25 minutes a game if he continues to struggle. So this hometown is going to be huge for him because now you have Tari Easton is back. Um, Cam Whitmore is with the team. Though he, didn't play, he didn't play at all tonight. Um, but you still have Aaron Holiday who's playing well. And Emma has no problem with mixing up the rotation, mixing up the matchups. He had Jeff Green finish the game with Jabari, with Dylan Brooks, and Alper. So he had a pretty big uh, lineup to finish the game. So Jalen's going to have to figure it out a way to fit in with this current team to where he's doing something positive on the court. He can't shoot bad and then turn the ball over. Like I said, that's going to automatically get you on the bench when it comes to NBA. I don't think NBA has a problem with if you're missing shots, but he does have a problem when you turn over the ball or you're being lackadaisical on defense. But the one thing I will say about Jalen is they showed several, uh, several shots of him during the game while he's on the bench, and he was up cheering. He was uh, clapping his hands. He was supporting his teammates. So he's not over there sulking and being mad that he's not playing, but at the end of the day, it's about results. So if he doesn't, uh, do what he needs to do on the court. He's going to spend a lot more time in the fourth quarter on the bench. But again, let's uh, before I wrap up this quick recap, definitely, again, give shout out to Alfred Shangoon. You talk about a guy taking a third-year leap. He is putting up all-star type numbers. And we saw after the game, Tari was next to him. He was getting interviewed. And he said that the Wizard, which is his nickname for him, is an all-star. And it's kind of hard to argue at this point the numbers he's putting up. Like I said, he actually absolutely, absolutely dominated the Pelicans. And he was the number one reason why the Rockets were able to pull off this victory. Like I said, a huge win for the team. Um, and it's just something that uh, I think is going to be a huge thing as the Rockets kind of go into the uh, Christmas break for them before they play on Tuesday uh, night. So definitely want to give a quick recap of the game, one of the biggest wins of the season for the Houston Rockets. And definitely want to... Uh, like I said, give my opinion on how great Alper Shangun is, as you cannot say it enough, as he's continued to be the Rockets' best player this season. And again, the Rockets will play again on Tuesday, and we'll see if they can continue uh, their winning streak that they have going here and hopefully kind of propel themselves during this homestand and get even submit themselves even further into the uh, playoff position where they are right now. So definitely make sure you continue to support Make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe button, because that helps with the YouTube algorithm. And why don't you let me know down in the comments, what do you think of number one, Operation Good? Do you think he's an all-star? Do you think he can get that all-star or not? Definitely with the help from all the support he has over in Turkey. Um, do you think he can kind of slip his way into maybe not even, he may not be able to get a starting position, but 
maybe a bench was a reserve uh, position the way he's been playing so far. And also, what do you think about Jalen Green? Do you think that he can turn it around and become the player that a lot of Rockets fans were hoping he was uh, when he was drafted number two? Or will you think he'll continue to slide and, and maybe continue to not play in crunch time situations like tonight? Let me know down in the comments. Again, we appreciate all support. Make sure you check out the next episode of the Rockets Fuel Podcast.